Hello and welcome to this Apply Tessie's Law question walkthrough. What's different about this one is it uh, takes a bit of thought to think about whether it's enthalpy of combustion you're dealing with or enthalpy of formation. So it's asking you to calculate the standard enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen sulfide using the enthalpy change for reaction 1 and the standard enthalpy changes of combustion below. So if we think about what the enthalpy change of formation of hydrogen sulfide would look like in a Hess law cycle, you would have something like this with the elements at the bottom in their standard states in the right mole ratios. And obviously that would be 2 times delta FH. So in a Hess's law cycle, if you're given delta CH, normally what would happen is you'd point the arrows downwards. And in the box here, you'd have the, the oxides like H2O, like SO2, for example. So why is it the way around? Well, if you look carefully, you can see that the other compounds in the reaction, the products, are also combustion products. So if we put in the arrows there, because that's the only direction we can put the arrows, we'd have 2 times delta FH of SO2 and 2 times delta FH of H2O. Now, you might have noticed that the data in the question is delta CH. So why am I talking about delta FH all of a sudden? And if I put the minus 1125 in, put the numbers in, and we keep in pink the thing we're trying to, to establish. We need to think about where we're starting, where we're finishing. So the indirect route is how we have to go. We can't take the route that's right next to where the pink delta FH is, because that's what they're trying to get us to work out. So coming back to these delta CH values, the key idea is that the enthalpy of formation of an oxide is the same as the enthalpy of combustion of the element it's an oxide of in the first place. So in other words, taking an example, delta CH for carbon is the same as the delta FH for CO2, because the delta FH for CO2 is the formation of one mole of the product or of the substance in its standard state, all reactants and products in their standard states as well, which is what that formula that equation there represents. So what that means is we can treat the values in the table as delta FH for the respective oxides, SO2 and H2O, which is what we have in the equation that we're given in the first place. So once you've overcome that piece of deduction, it opens this up for you. So putting the numbers into a calculation, we're clearly making 2 delta FH of H2S the subject. We can do the dividing to divide it down to 1 times delta FH in a moment. So that gives us minus 40.2. And also I'm not giving it any units just yet, because if I was to put kilojoules per mole, that would be slightly incorrect, because obviously we're dealing with two delta FHs. So once you divide that down by two, that gives you 20, uh, minus 20.1 kilojoules per mole to the minus one. And if you go to the March scheme and uh, check it says the answer is minus 20 for three marks in total. So let's have a look at the mark scheme and see how they did. Fairly similar to what we did. You need to use both delta CH values and multiply them up by two. You need to use minus 1125 and correctly processed. So we did the plus 1125 which is the same as the minus minus there. And you divide it by two at the end which gives you minus 20.1 which is minus 20 is what they put. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.